is Michael Hendershot, KJ4 FEQ. The next video in this series is the configuring WinLink to work with a hardware based TNC. To download the software, I went to the WinLink site, winlink.org, and you click on software, then user software, and you'll see PackLink here in the middle, and you just click on the click here to download the latest PackLink version. That's all you do to get the new version. And here's the install on my desktop. I happen to be using a PK96 from TimeWave. Okay, I'm going to start the install. I'm currently running Windows 7, so this does work on Windows 7 very well. Okay, you see it installs by default the SQL and pack link. After this software installs, it doesn't create any icons or anything for you, so you're going to have to create you a shortcut. So I've already created the shortcut on my desktop, so I don't have to recreate it. But I'll show you where it installs to when you just... Okay, the software is installed. So if I browse to my hard drive... Under pack link in the bin directory, you'll see it's called pack link and there's an application. You can create your shortcut here or do it from the desktop, but there's your application you would run. Basically, the first time that you launch uh, pack link, it's going to go out and it's going to download updates to the software. And every so often, and, um, it'll do an update check and patch it for you. First thing we're going to do is set up our site properties. You can see here that it, this has been installed before. So what we do is we enter our call sign, KJ4FEQ, and the other, the password field. This is so when your mail client goes out to download this mail from your Outlook Express, like in the demo, it needs a password. So it's going to use your call sign, KJ4FEQ, and it's going to use my password of 2 meter to get it. So this is where that password exists. In the grid, in the grid square, EM90DC. And under the ID and prefix stuff, it's just put in your call sign. And that's all there is to that screen. And you do update if you make a change. Under polling interval, very important. There's two options. I can say automatically poll every so many minutes. Um, normally I set mine to like four times an hour if I'm just sitting here because you don't want it connecting up all the time. And if you get into a situation where you're in a, a drill or a true disaster, you don't want to be everyone checking their mail all the time. So I recommend uh, maybe set it a little bit higher or only check email when you need to, you know. And the option that's really nice is it's automatically sent to any pending messages without waiting for a poll. So normally if I'm sitting at my desk at home, uh, like today for example, and I want to send an email, I would just um, let it send and not have to worry about it because I only send one email. But in the event uh, you're doing a drill or disaster or something like that, you might, you might want to turn off that second option, automatically send any pending messages because every email you send is going to try to connect and send and then disconnect so I recommend setting it to an automatic poll or manually sending and receiving the mail once you get some messages queued up but for now this for my house this is perfect right here this is what I normally run right here so I'm going to update that So what you see here is I went into packet TNC channels. I've already pre-configured this and tested it to make sure it would work, but pretty much what you do is you go in here and you give it a name. This stands for Orange Park Hospital dash TNC. I just gave it a name so I know it's my, um, I'm directly connecting to my TNC. So this is a descriptive name here. To the right here you have a remote call sign. This is actually is the critical piece for where you're going to connect to. This is the um, call sign of the WinLink mail switch. So it's WD4SEN-10. And this is just, uh, you know, several miles from my house. Next you'll see channel priority. If we had multiple 
Winlink stations that we wanted to connect to and one of them would go down, we can add multiple in here and if one goes down it will keep going through the list based on priority. So one is being the highest, five being the lowest. So right now I'll set this speed to me to be the main one. I don't ever change these two options up here. What's really critical is channel enabled. So once you get this thing set up and working, if you said, hey, I don't want to connect to that one anymore, you can come in here and check, uncheck that box right here and hit update. And uh, what will happen is is it will actually, um, actually disable it so you won't see it in your list. This is the second critical piece here. Type of TNC. I happen then to own the PK96, so that's what I selected. It supports a lot of other TNC, so you should be able to find support for it. And the serial port, I know is COM3. And I know that my serial port on my computer is configured at 9600 baud. And make sure that you do, do a full TNC configuration on first use. Make sure that's checked. Something I'd like to clarify just uh, just for a second is that packet, when you are communicating via, via your radio over the airwaves on amateur radio, most packet is not is 1200 baud. There are some 9600 baud links out there, but most of them are 1200. So by default, you're going to be 1200. So that's what this just stands for here. So this is the baud rate going over RF to another packet switch. It's 1200. And this is and this one down here is actually your how your what speed your COM port's configured to that talks to your TNC. So if you were adding this for the very first time, you click add new channel, but since I, it's already configured for me, I'm going to do update channel. And it updated it, so I'm good. So we went through and we've configured the site properties and the polling interval. And we went through and what we did is we checked the packet TNC channel. The packet TNC channel is, is what we use for for a hardware based TNC. Other options we have in here is the AGW engine. AGW is a program that provides a software layer between your TNC or sound card and it gives you a software interface basically that other programs can use and we'll talk about that later. Um, but AGW is a great product, and I use that one also. Pactor is what we what we use if we're going to be going over HF and Telnet. The Telnet channels is what we use if we want our our WinLink to directly connect via the internet and download the email. So if I wanted to enable a Telnet channel, I'll show you how easy this is. Click on Telnet channel, and um, channel name should be CMS. So basically I type in channel name CMS and I hit add channel and that's it. So it's configured. So I'll show you what happens. So now if you look at my pack link configuration we have an auto connect. And the very first time I went through I configured one called Orange Park Hospital TNC. To, so you, we know that's my hardware based TNC that goes over our RF. And then I configured one called CMS. It's a Telnet link. So if I click on CMS that this is actually connecting via my internet connection to the WinLink site. But for the purpose of the demo, I'm not going to be using this one. So I'm going to show you what happens if you say, okay, well, you know, I really don't want to use that right now. So I go and I select it, and I go in here and say channel enabled. I uncheck it and say update channel. So now if I go back in, look what happens. I only have one left. So let's go ahead and check my mail on the WinLink switch and see if this thing will actually communicate. The first thing it does is it says configuring TNC, please wait. So after it passes the commands to it, then it then will start making a connection. I'll turn the volume up so you can hear it. So you can see here that it made a connection and there was nothing to find, so I'll do it one more time.
so far so good. We have uh, pack link connecting up and downloading, downloading email. The next part of this puzzle is what, now we need to configure Outlook to send and receive email. So, so, so Outlook's up and running. I already have this configured, so basically I'm just going to show you how it works. So basically I created an entry, and I gave it a name of, you know, this is just a descriptive name, so I'm going to double click on here. These settings are the same for any type of mail client. You can use Mozilla, the one, the one that comes with Thunderbird, I believe it is, Thunderbird, or any type of mail client. So basically you, you give a descriptive name, so I gave it Michael Hendershot KJ4 FEQ. The email address we use at Winlink is KJ4 FEQ at winlink.org. So once you send your very first email, it will establish an email account for you automatically. And uh, and and these two settings are the same for everybody if it's on your local computer. It's uh, 127.0.0.1, or you can use the word local host. I just put the IP in just because that's the way I wanted to do it. Here's the critical piece. You see username and password. KJ4FEQ is the call sign. So let me go over here and show you show you how this matches up. So if you look on the right, you see the username matches the SSID KJ4FEQ, and the password should match what you set for password. That's how it knows. And in PackLink, whenever you first configure it, that very first account you add gets added what the, under the Manage Call Sign Account section. Basically, you'll see your call sign on there. The, the, there will be only one in there uh, when you first set up uh, PackLink. So if you want to check multiple accounts, you could just go in here and, like, I, I could put my dad's call sign in here, for example, and say Add New Account, Add New Call Sign Account, and put his name and password in, and then this would download that mail if he were actually using my computer to get his WinLink mail. That's all there is to that. So your name, descriptive name, your email address, which is your call sign at winlink.org. The incoming mail servers are the same. It's the local host address of 127.0.0.1 and your username and your password. The other thing that you need to watch out for is this right here. Under outgoing server and what we're looking for is my outgoing server SNTP requires authentication use same settings as incoming mail server so make sure that in your client you tell it that you have to authenticate to get the mail otherwise you'll never get it so like in the demo when I checked my mail if you hit send receive it actually connects over here and you, and you could see that uh, that that it made a connection. So now to show you that it does work, I'm also in the email to a friend of mine, K4IFX. So when I hit send, you can see here that it showed up in blue and because I don't have anything to automatically send it I just need to go up here to the connect button and tell it to connect I can click this or I can click auto connect So WinLink has just tra WinLink has just transmitted my email, and this line right here is the this was the email that I sent. And whenever he checks his email today or whenever he'll have it. So send and receive. I haven't gotten emails back yet. So that's the configuration of uh, WinLink using a standard TNC.